Welcome back guys. Last week we created our camera and it's working pretty well with one glaringly obvious flaw and that is that the camera goes through the floor. <laughs> Do you get it? Do you see what I did there? Anyway, this week we are going to be fixing that with not one but two spring arms. Quick reminder before we begin, if you're enjoying the course, hit that like button and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. Want the whole course now? Become a channel member or join my Patreon for immediate access to all episodes. Not into subscriptions? You can buy the full course on Udemy and keep it forever. Check in the description for the links. Let's get started. Okay, so we're back in this project again. And last time we were working on this, we got pretty close to a pretty simple prototype, but the camera freely rotates through all 3D objects. How do we go about fixing that? Now, there's actually a couple of different ways that you can do this, but one of the ways that I like to do it is with multiple spring arms. So the first thing is introducing the spring arm. So what is a spring arm? A spring arm is an inbuilt node within Godot that allows you to 3D ray cast and dynamically move its children close to the collision point. So basically it's a shortcut. So how you would do this if this didn't exist is that you would ray cast to a certain point and if there's anything in between that, you would find out that distance and you would move that object like the camera in between the two. Now they've taken out the heavy lifting so we don't even really have to think about it, which is great for us. So we can create a spring arm and what you'll notice, it's kind of hard to see, but if I rotate this a little bit, so it's not on the main axis, is this little blue line here. And that is our spring length. And that basically is the length that whatever is the child of this, which is going to be our camera, will go to. Okay, so what we can do is we can set this to something, uh, it doesn't really matter right now, I'm going to choose 1.5. The 5 meters is a little bit too far, I think, probably if we're going to be making a shooting game, but uh, we'll go with 1.5 for this. And all we need to do is make this a child of the uh, spring arm. And that's the job. Obviously I rotated this, so we will just uh, reset that rotation. Now it doesn't matter where you put this camera in space. It's always going to uh, be sent to the uh, maximum spring arm length. So right now we have reset the position. So it's at zero, zero and it has no rotation. Uh, but uh, when we run the game, we will be pushed it back behind the player. Now we're a little bit low, but in order to actually address that, what we will do is actually raise the node camera here up to a desirable level. So I'm going to raise that up to about head height. Now you can actually move the camera back to the position that you want it to be at. So 1.5, we had it at and we'll move that back out a little bit. Uh, we'll go into preview mode so that we can see that. So that's a little bit closer to like that third person shooter style that we're going for. Yeah, we'll go with 0.5, eh? Um, a little bit offset, but not totally. So the center is still like around here, right? Um, and the, the mesh will go away. The mesh is very big. So something like that will work. Um, and so we can have the camera offset. Uh, we actually need to, I don't think that's actually going to matter for this. If we run it, you can see it's <laughs> sent straight back to the center. So you can see how the spring arm will work. And now if back up against something, we just see mesh because we're not going to be able to push through that. But if we want an offset, we'll need to, uh, move the spring arm across. What did I say? 1.5. So we'll move the spring arm across and then we'll have that, uh, offset that we have. Now you will notice a bit of an issue with this offset and that is that we still are able to clip through because the spring arm doesn't register until we reach a certain point. And especially if you just work at walking sideways, so I didn't really de demonstrate that here. So if we were just go sideways up against, we can easily clip through this wall here, which we don't really want to do. And especially if you had this at a more extreme length, like if you had this at one or like 0.9, let's say, uh, you'd run into a lot of issues. Um, so we can go all the way across and clip pretty much out. So you don't want that, right? So how do you fix this? Now, the, the answer is with multiple spring arms. So we want to have a side spring arm and a rear spring arm, and we're going to introduce shapes as well. So let's add another spring arm, right? So I'm going to start naming these so that we actually know. So this one's going to be the edge spring arm because it's going to detect edges. And this one is going to be the rear spring arm. This is going to detect things behind us, All right? And so how this will work is that the edge spring arm will be the root spring arm, right? And we'll need to rotate this 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 
Um, and then we make this one a child of it, and Godot will autofill the rotation of negative 90. That basically makes it so it'll still be behind the character. The edge spring arm of 0.5. So we've got the rear spring arm, spring length of uh, 1.5, and the edge spring arm of 0.5. Now we've got a rotation and a rotation. So let's give this a run and just see and make sure that everything's positioned as you would expect. So you'll notice that there's a small offset and the camera is still positioned by the player so if you don't have that just jump in and maybe have a tweak make sure you've got those rotations set properly might actually make this um offset a bit bigger so we can see what's going on and i'll make this uh spring arm length of one so that we can see it a little bit better because this mesh is big we might reset that later when we introduce a rig um, and the rig will get a lot smaller because this guy's radius is quite large so we'll run that and you can see that we're appropriately positioned on the outside and in theory as we get closer to this, we should push closer. And we do for a bit, but then we eventually pop through. And the reason for this, as far as I can um, assume, is because the collision shape on these um, on these spring arms is very small. It's just a, a ray cast, right? So if we introduce a shape, then it will react a little bit better. So it's not really clear to me. As far as I'm aware, this sets, sits on the end. You can't actually see it in the inspector. But if I had to assume that these work a lot like an, a shape, cast 3d which is another node in Godot I might bring one in so you can see what I'm talking about if you've never looked at these before so this is a shape cast um, and you won't see anything at the moment it's the same kind of deal it's got this little blue line but when I introduce a ball it sort of sits in the end so this is a sphere at the end that detects the collision and then it is moved in between them and shape cast 3d work a lot like spring arms except they don't actually move their children you just you can just check their position and so you could in theory use shape casts for this similar kind of thing uh and in fact i think i might have tried at one point but in the end spring arms are the way to go so we'll remove that and so if i could just imagine that's what's happening here because i can't see i'm assuming that's where they are placed if we hover over this um the, when the shape is set the spring arm will cast the shape on its set axis instead of performing a ray cast so it i'm fairly certain that's what it's doing so let's just make sure that we've got a sphere shape on both of these spring arms and we'll give this a bit of a run to see how things are looking and if there's any improvement and we can see things look pretty good from this bit but as soon as we get to the wall things aren't behaving how we want them to in fact I might even say that it looks a little bit worse with that uh, the, the camera is clipping and jumping around and this is generally not at all what we want to see. The way that we can fix this is by reducing the radius on the rear spring arm. So essentially uh, the radius of the rear spring arm is so big that it's clipping in with uh, other things and pushing it too far forward at times. We can reduce that radius. I found 0.1 works pretty well for this project. Um, you can work around with what works for you. Um, and the other thing that I think helps is reducing the margin. This just helps with detection. You can see that the spring arm has already got a margin of 0.1. So I'm going to make the shapes match that. And so now if we head on over to the wall, we'll see that things are behaving much more how we want them to. So we can walk into the wall. We're not popping through. And when we turn the camera into the player, yeah, we get really close to the mesh, but overall it looks pretty good and i'll walk over into the corner here because that's another problem point and you can see that it's working exactly how we want it to and so those are the general steps if you're still having issues with this play around with the shape uh make it smaller change the sh maybe you could try a different shape but generally that's what that popping is if you don't want to use the shapes and you're okay with a little bit of clipping then that's an option too you can remove those shapes now the other thing that we do want to do is actually increase the size of our collision radius of our player. Now, this wasn't something that I was going to do so early on, but since I am having some strange issues, um, one of the things I noticed in the test project, and this is something we do with a, a third person shooter anyway, is make this collision shape bigger than the actual mesh. So I'm actually just gonna bump this up to 0.8. Uh, so that the mesh can never clip through anything and this player mesh will actually end up being a lot smaller but that should help on corners and things like that um, to a certain extent so that we can't actually get that close to them and just when we rotate around we're not like having some strange clipping going in through the player we're still going to be able to clip the uh, player mesh and we'll have a solution for that later I don't know about the corners we'll see how we go here and it looks like we're 
we're not going to clip through the world in the corners either because we can't get that close to the corner anymore. Now, um, I have looked at a lot of games, a lot of third person shooters before making this tutorial. And from what I can tell, this is actually pretty common practice. Um, in a lot of the games that I've sampled, uh, the collision shape of the player is actually much larger than the mesh that you're looking at. Um, and that's, uh, I guess just a design choice that people make, especially because um, stopping the uh, the player mesh from clipping with the world would be pretty difficult with a shader. Um, so it makes sense that they would just make the collision shape a little bit larger to avoid that. The other thing as well that we absolutely need to do um, is change the layer of the player. So by default, the player was just on one one and we actually don't want that anymore. Now the player still needs to collide with layer one, but it doesn't want to be on layer one. So if you aren't aware of how collision layers work is that the layer that you are on and the layer that you interact with can be different. So our player does need to detect the world, right? So it's gonna mask the world. But if I took it off layer one, then it's still gonna have gravity and all that kind of stuff. It'll still sit on that on the world like this and we can still jump and all those kind of things. But if there was another object that needed to scan layer one to interact with things, it would not see the player. So uh, we still obviously want to put the player layer player on a layer. Uh, we'll, we'll make it layer two. So we'll remember to sort of be organized and come back into the project settings under uh, 3D physics and name this second layer player so that we know that the player exists on layer two um, if there are things that need to detect it. Uh, but yeah, so we take the, the player off that layer so that the spring arms won't accidentally uh, see the, the player and collide with that. All right, guys, I hope you found this episode helpful. Next week, we are going to be fine tuning our controls further with the ability to change which side our camera sits on the character. If you've been enjoying this series, I do appreciate a like and subscribe. And if you want immediate access to every single episode, you can become a channel member or join the Patreon. And if you don't want a month to month fee, you can always jump over to Udemy and buy the course outright. Other than that, guys, I'll see you all next time.